Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. Today I have a winner winner chicken and potato dinner in the form of my braised spring chicken and potato casserole. This is an absolutely gorgeous springtime kind of fresh flavored dinner that really comes to the table in no time at all. We're gonna brown off chicken and bacon, get them really sizzling and golden before braising them with some white wine, some chicken stock, and then adding some great spring veggies in the form of some rooster potatoes, some spring onions, some peas, and some baby jam. What brings it together is the zestiness of the lemon and the herby element of thyme. It's a really simple recipe that makes the best of springtime flavors. To start this off, I'm gonna get the heat on a nice casserole dish. Now I'm using one that has a lid and we're gonna use the lid a little bit later, but it is important that you have one that has a lid. And while the heat comes up, we're gonna get in there with a little touch of oil, just about a tablespoon or so. And then to this, we're going straight in with our bacon. I just have some nice regular bacon here. You're looking for the meatiness and the saltiness you get from it. And you can see I'm adding it to the pan as it heats up and that will allow any of the fat to render out and we'll get nice crispy bits of bacon. So fry that off just until it starts sizzling. I always love starting a casserole like this with bacon in the pan because it means that you're getting all those kind of crispy bits on the bottom. It's infused it with a little bit of salty flavor and it's just the start of where the flavor comes from in this dish. So this is good to go. I'm gonna take our bacon out of the pan at this point. And now that that's out, heat's back on and we're gonna add in both a little bit of oil and some butter. There's always something quite lovely about frying chicken in butter. I just think it just adds great flavor to it from the very, very start. So the butter and the oil go in, melt that down, and straight to the pan, we're gonna go in there with our chicken thighs. So pop them in, get them nice and nuzzled in, make sure your heat is up, and we're gonna get really crispy skin on our chicken before we turn it. Now, once you have all the chicken in here, a key moment is making sure you have enough of that butter in there. It should be kind of lifting up on the sides so that you get that bubbling action around the edge of the skin. Now, while this cooks out, we wanna season it pretty generously with a good bit of salt and pepper. Now, really, I want you to season your chicken heavily at this point. It's gonna cook out and it needs to take on that flavor. So salt and pepper more than you'd think. As soon as the chicken has gone in, you want to leave it to sit and take on that color. The minute you start moving around chicken like this at this point in the cooking time, it's just gonna stick. So allow the fat to render out of the chicken skin and go really rich, golden, and crispy. Now, it only needs like a couple of minutes to get that really rich golden brown color, but please take your time with this. You wanna make sure that you've got that before you move on to this next step. So I'm gonna turn all our chicken thighs at this point. You can see the gorgeous color is there. Don't be afraid of any of the bottom of the pan going, looking a bit kind of brown and a little bit kind of darker. We're gonna use all those gnarly brown bits to create great flavor in the braising liquid. So once you've turned your chicken, it's time to build even more flavor. And that comes in the form of a little bit of lemon zest. It's the zest of one lemon in here. And this is, you know, for a springtime dish, it's that little hit of freshness that goes really well alongside the chicken. So let that sizzle and become aromatic. And in amongst that, we're gonna add in a little touch of thyme sprig. So pop them in around. They may sizzle, they may spit, but they're gonna add great flavor. And to this, we now wanna deglaze the base of this pan with a little bit of white wine. Pour that over, get all that lovely smoke and steam in the kitchen, and you've got great, smells happening right now. This is, this is how you make sure people come to the dinner table. So give that a little bit of a shuffle and a shake just to ensure any of the kind of bits that are stuck to the bottom loosen up. And once that has happened, we're gonna go straight in there with plenty of chicken stock. You wanna add enough chicken stock to bring the liquid up to almost halfway up the chicken. Pour that all the way over. We're gonna add our bacon back to the pan. So that's our bacon. Now it's time for those beautiful potatoes. So just kind of nuzzle them in amongst the chicken and make sure that temperature comes up in the pan like it has here. We're gonna get the lid back on and now this is gonna cook out just until the chicken is cooked through and the potatoes are nice and tender. Okay, chicken has had its moment to cook out. 
and just look at that. Beautiful steaming potatoes, chicken that is nice and tender and you've got this gorgeous braising liquid. Now we're gonna make use of all the flavor that's in the pan and bring it to life with plenty of spring greens. For that, I have some spring onions, which I've topped and tailed. We're just gonna place this in and around the chicken. I'm also gonna add in some frozen peas. If you had fresh, by all means, go for it. And then lastly, which feels a bit strange, but it's really wonderful to add in some baby gem, just halved. These gorgeous little lettuces are gonna cook out in the steam. You only want the steam to just take the bite out of them here. And we're gonna pop them just straight on the top. Give it a season with some salt and pepper. And then lid goes straight back on. And the steam and the heat that's in the pan is going to cook through those vegetables until they're just tender. It only takes less than five minutes and you've got a dish that is ready to be served to the table. Literally, after just a couple of minutes, you can see those veggies have wilted down, they've become nice and tender, and now this is good to serve. So, grab up some of that chicken, all those lovely peas, and I would go for about two pieces of chicken per person, and then ensure they get plenty of potatoes, a little bit of that baby jam action, and lots of spring onions. This is an absolute midweek winner. You can see it's got everything all in one dish that can be served straight to the table, and it looks absolutely glorious. So, I'm gonna dive in and try some. Hmm. It's like a lighter version of a classic roast chicken dinner. But then you have all these great extra elements of the peas that have braised down. They've taken on a bit of the flavor. And I wanna try some of that braised baby gem too. Mm. It's such a different way of cooking those little baby gem heads, but they go sweet and tender, and I love the texture of them in here as well. And the great thing about adding the potatoes in there as well means that you get a really substantial meal. Mm. And they've taken on all the flavor of what's in that pan. As always, you will get the full recipe details over on my website. You can click the subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications and leave me a comment letting me know if you're trying this lovely chicken and potato dinner. Until then, I'm off to eat the rest of this, so I'll see you soon.